All right, folks, we have some wild and crazy things going on right now at Walmart, and it's time to get ready and stock up and prepare. Go ahead, grab that gat and avoid shopping at night if at all possible, because it's getting real out here in the field. Breaking news, man seriously hurt after self-inflicted stabbing. Mother dies and child also hit by minivan that pins her against a tree in a Walmart parking lot. And Walmart just announced they are making major changes to all these stores beginning in these two states and everything that you need to know coming up right now. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Just takes a second. And thank you guys for your support and helping the channel grow. All right. So a shocking story coming out of Richmond, Kentucky, and apparently a man is in critical condition after stabbing himself at the Richmond Walmart, according to police. The incident was first reported around 1030 p.m. last night, and an officer at the scene told local news that a man came to Walmart and asked to buy a gun. Shortly thereafter, an employee said the man was acting suspicious and jittery and was ultimately denied the purchase, which... I didn't know Walmart still sold firearms, so I was today years old when I found that out. But either way, the officer said the man then took a knife from a shelf and started cutting himself in the restroom. And then after he was done mutilating his own body, he left the restroom and continued stabbing himself inside the store. So obviously something was just not right with this guy and this man stabbing himself in the store. And I applaud the Walmart worker for identifying these clear warning signs and denying the purchase of the gun. And honestly, I think he should get a raise or at the very least be named employee of the month and get a pizza party in the break room. So the police were already nearby and in the area because of a completely separate and unrelated incident and crews and then immediately rushed the man to the hospital for treatment of his serious injuries. Later on, a statement was released and police say that the man did not threaten anyone else besides himself. But honestly, who knows what put him in this troubling state and what could have happened if someone approached him in the store while he was cutting himself with a knife. The news report stated how investigators believe the man was experiencing a mental health episode, which is understandable considering everything that's going on right now. And this is just further confirmation of my repetitive reinforcement to reach out and talk to people because you just never know. And there's a lot of folks out there going through some things right now and they feel like they have nobody to talk to. They may even self-medicate and then combine it with alcohol, which is never a good combination. And then we see situations like these where they end up doing harm to themselves, causing problems at businesses or worse, doing harm to other people. Mental health is very important and shouldn't go unaddressed and overlooked. So please pay attention to the key warning signs before it gets worse and things get really bad and it's ultimately just too late. Now, I mean, you all remember the Walmart scare we had last year where someone else had a mental health breakdown and threatened to crash a plane into a Walmart, right? The rogue pilot, who was later identified as Corey Patterson, stole an airplane and threatened to dive bomb into a Walmart store in Tupelo, Mississippi last September. And oddly enough, the story continued to take on an crazy and bizarre twist because while in federal custody, Corey Patterson ended up dying in prison. So apparently the 29 year old Mississippi man charged with stealing a plane and threatening to crash it into a Walmart in September died in federal custody shortly thereafter. And Patterson was said to have been found unresponsive at the federal detention center in Miami, where he was being held for psychological evaluation. And despite attempts by prison staff and EMS personnel to save his life, he was pronounced dead at the facility. And the cause of death, as stated by Patterson's attorney, was though the Bureau of Prisons, the BOP, did not confirm this. Now, previously, Patterson had pleaded not guilty to grand larceny and making terroristic threats. He was accused of stealing a twin engine aircraft from a regional airport in Tupelo, Mississippi, and then threatening to crash it into a local Walmart. Now, this incident led to the evacuation of the store and surrounding areas and the closure of major streets. Patterson eventually landed the plane in the field after negotiations with the Tupelo police and was arrested. Now, the FBI and U.S. Marshals Service have been notified of Patterson's death, and the Miami-Dade Medical Examiner's Office is still investigating the case. The FBI, while not confirming an investigation into Patterson's death, 
typically investigates in-custody deaths of federal inmates. Now, I don't know why Walmart ends up being the go-to and beacon for the final collapse of so many mental health cases, but we mustn't ignore the warning signs and get these folks some help, the help that they so desperately need. And honestly, this, this story is just so sad, guys. I mean, it really is. And just about 600 clicks due southeast as the crow flies, Michelle Williams, a 47-year-old mother, tragically died after she and her two children were struck by a minivan near a Gastonia Walmart on Thursday evening. The news report said that the accident occurred in the Walmart parking lot on East Franklin Boulevard in Gastonia around 7 p.m. on December 14th. And sadly, Williamson succumbed to her injuries following the crash and her children, who were also hit by the minivan, were thrown aside by the impact. Fortunately, they survived but required hospitalization. However, the driver of the minivan, described only as an elderly female, has somehow not yet faced any charges. And local authorities say they are currently consulting with the district attorney to determine the next steps in the investigation and the legal process concerning this incident. Now, if anyone knows anything more about this story or is possibly close by or shops at this Walmart, please Fill me in on what's really going on, because it seems like something like this happening should result in some form of action taken by police, right? Now, get this. Walmart has been preparing to roll out a new plan for several stores, and they are warning everyone right now customers will hate these major changes. And this is going to hit stores in at least two states so far right now. So Walmart, the world's largest retailer, is well known for its convenience and accessibility with a store within 10 miles of 90% of the U.S. population. And in fiscal year 2023, it reported something like $611 billion in revenue. However, in recent years, they have seen shifts in their business due to rising interest rates post-pandemic and changing migration patterns, ultimately affecting store traffic negatively. And for added context, the Consumer Price Index indicates an overall increase in prices across various categories over the past 12 months. So get ready, folks. Higher prices, higher price hikes, and even more transitory inflation. And most notably were changes to fuel and energy prices. Food prices rose by 3.3% and shelter expenses went up by 6.7%. And so retailers like Walmart are saying how all these rising costs have led to a surge in retail theft and shoplifting with a 16% increase in such incidents in major U.S. cities in the first half of 2023 when compared to 2019. So to try and introduce some form of damage control, Walmart has been adapting its checkout process to address in-store theft, particularly at self-checkout kiosks, which are more susceptible to shoplifting and the company has now introduced something new, and they call it Hosted Checkouts. And this is hitting some of the stores already, and this is where associates are, quote-unquote, going to assist customers and basically look over their shoulders and breathe down their backs to monitor the checkout process and make sure they're not stealing anything, you know? But Walmart still knows that self-checkout still poses more challenges with a reported loss rate that is double the national average at 4%. So in response to these challenges and concerns about sales, Walmart is reportedly considering removing its hosted checkouts in Maine and Massachusetts and reintroducing some other form of checkout process instead. And additionally, in September, Walmart removed self-checkout options in three New Mexico stores because of crime, loss, theft, and shrink. But this decision just reflects Walmart's ongoing efforts to try and adapt to changing customer behaviors and tackle the issues of theft in its stores. But apparently not really being too much concerned about the overall shopping experience and customer satisfaction. But I want to know what you guys think about all this. So drop a comment and I can read them and then react to them on a future video. Please smash the like button and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys real soon with another news update. I can tell you my problems, meditating my silence. But I keep pushing my pen, rotating my stylus. Brokenness feeling like sin, now no breath, flow dollar. Used to be left on red, now all the girls go holler. Now all the girls go follow. All the fake